Today, we're going to talk about a Lightroom file organization structure that made my workflow much more efficient. So like a lot of photographers, when I first started using Lightroom, I just sort of accepted the default. So you'd get your year, get your month, and your day, and that's how the photo is imported in, and that's just the structure I continue to work with. And in the early days, it actually worked out pretty well. I didn't have a whole lot of photos. It was pretty easy to remember, yeah, I shot that earlier this year, or I shot it at the tail end of last year. So it wasn't hard to sort of do the mental math to figure out when did I shoot that and find it in my Lightroom catalog. Now, as a photographer, I have shot portraits and events and landscape photography, and I'm doing much more landscape photography than I used to, but my past files also include not just my landscape photography photos, but also a lot of client photos for portraits, headshots, and events. So while my Lightroom catalog was very well organized from the year, month, date perspective, me trying to do the mental math to remember when I shot something was much more difficult. And as all these photos continue to pile up and I continue to move more into landscape photography, a lot of times I'll get requests, have you photographed this metro park? Have you photographed this particular scene? And I sort of dreaded those requests because I know I'm going to have to dig back into my Lightroom catalog that spans multiple years and try to remember what year did I shoot that and is this the best image I have of that place? and I just knew it was going to take a significant amount of time to find it. And the default Lightroom organization just was not scaling well for me. I hadn't really set out to solve this problem. I was just sort of living with it. But luckily, I hang out in a few online communities, online forums dedicated to landscape photography and such. And in one of them, a particular individual named Suzanne Mathia, people are talking about their Lightroom organization methods and what works for them. And she happened to post a blog post she had on a method that worked really well for her. Now, she's had lots of experience in landscape photography with a variety of images from the Southwest and lots of places she'd visited multiple times. So she sort of had the same similar organization problems I have been experiencing but she'd found a solution that was working well for her. So I finally took the time to read the article, sort of study it, and sort of think about it in my head, and would this work for me? I started thinking about trips I'd taken, when I'd photographed, and started just sort of visualizing this layout in my head to see if I thought it would work. And I finally decided to give it a shot. I was going to experiment with the past two years worth of images or so and try this new organization method. Worst case, I could always fix it and move it back, or I could see if it really worked out well. Suzanne spoke very highly of this method, and I decided to give it a shot. That method, it's location-based organization. So the location-based organization method is pretty much exactly what it sounds. I just hadn't really thought of trying to organize my photos this way. I was just so accustomed to the Lightroom defaults of the year, month, day. But after looking at what I discovered is I could start with my high level. So for example, I tend to only travel domestically. I don't do a lot of international travel. So I have my top level being the state the photograph was taken in. So it could be Ohio, it could be Colorado, California, Arizona. And I start there. So that's my top level underneath this new organization system. Then below that, I will name the general region or area. And for example, my local area might say Hocking Hills, or if I was in California visiting Death Valley, I might have the next subfolder would be Death Valley. And then beyond that, I would usually allocate it by month because what I was trying to do is avoid that which day did I take the photo. So I would sort of categorize the trip by month. So if I visited Hocking Hills in May, that would be a Hocking Hills underscore May. And then I would put the year on it, underscore 2023, 2024, something like that. So for example, if someone was looking for a waterfall from Hocking Hills, I could easily go down to Ohio, Hocking Hills, and I could either look at all the folders under there, or maybe they were looking for a wintertime image, so I could look for a December, January, February image. But either way, it was super easy to go find my collection of images from particular areas and have just enough of a date type component to it that I could also narrow it down to what time of year that was taken in. So let's go into Lightroom and let's take a look. Now, like I said, I've used to photograph a lot of portraits, a lot of headshots, a lot of events. So as we go through my catalogs, you're going to see sort of a mixture of people pictures and landscape pictures. These days, I predominantly only shoot landscapes. Uh, I shoot a few portraits and headshots here for old clients, but for the most part, I'm doing primarily landscape photography. But as we bounce through here, if you see something that's a person and you're like, well, I see have that, it's just sort of a throwback to the past and some of the work I still do between landscape photography trips. So let's dive into Lightroom and take a look. Okay, so over here in Lightroom, I have not completely transitioned over to this method. I've sort of taken my past two or three years of photos and moved them into this location-based organization. And it was sort of my test to see, does it work? And it's worked out really well. And for the most part, because a lot of the photos I want are ones I've taken within the past two to three years, because like any landscape photographer, any photographer in general, your work tends to improve over time. So if someone was looking for a photo, it's probably gonna be something in that more recent time period. With that said, I have plans to go back through 
and do this with all of my landscape photos and pull them into this location-based organization setup because you never know sometimes I might have a good composition and my editing skills have caught up to something I've captured so I just sort of want to be able to reference those in order to do re-edits maybe on some older images to sort of bring them more in line with what I would consider a decent photo today. So we're going to dive in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you sort of my overall organization that I have now. Like I said, it is a little bit of a mix, uh, but I will be able to show off the location based and how I think it works out really well for me. And again, I have portraits in here, headshots, events. So as we scroll through, I'll try to focus in on landscape photography photos, but it, you, we're going to see some people. It's just, this is how it's going to work. So let's dive in here to Lightroom. And what I've got here is I sort of keep my Lightroom catalog, my files on two locations. I have some kept on my laptop. These are the ones that are more current you know, within the past year or two, depends on how much disk space I have. So right now I have 2022, 2023, and 2024 on here. And these are sitting on my laptop. Now, I have an archive process where I move older files off to my NAS. I have a NAS that sits uh, in my office and I move the older ones off to over there. So I have 2014 to 2021 over there. So that's sort of how I'm organized. I've got them split across two places. My more frequently used ones are on my laptop. And then right here, so let's take a real quick look at the year, right? So we take a look at the year and we dive in here and you can see, and I've already moved a lot. That's why I've got a lot of empty folders here, but this is the typical Lightroom organization system. You've got 2023 sitting right up here. And then you come down, you've got the year, month, and day that you took the photo. So for example, if we come down here and we look at this 2023, 04, 14, these are photos I took down in Hocking Hills. And I've not moved these yet over to my location-based section. Sometimes I still need to do, but this is this is how you would do it. And so right now, these would be difficult to find. These photos would be hard to find because they're tucked away in some year. And because this could have been 2022, 2021, it makes it very difficult to find. But that's the default Lightroom organization structure. And that's what these folders are for. They still contain a few landscape photos, as we saw, that I haven't yet moved, and in some portraits and, and such like that. The new system is organized underneath this landscape images here. Here's what we can talk about. So because I tend to be only within the United States, that's uh, my top level folder starts with the state. If I was doing more travel to like Iceland or Norway or Greenland or other interesting places to go photograph outside the United States, I probably would have started my top level folder as a country or a, or a world region. But instead, since I know I tend to be a domestic traveler, I started with the state. So as we can see here, let's collapse these real quick. Come in here. So I've got my Arizona photos, California, Colorado, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. That's my top level. So say I'm looking for some Arizona photos. So I can pop into my Arizona section and I got Phoenix area photos when I was there in August of 2023. I've got Phoenix photos from when I was there in December of 2023 and Tucson photos from December of 2021. If I do something similar and go, to, let's take a look at Ohio because obviously I travel a lot around Ohio. Here we go with, I have my Ohio folder. And then underneath that, I have Glen Helen. That's a nature preserve from that trip. Didn't even put a date on this one. I probably should have, but I've really only gone to once. But if I could rename this to add the date, I think it would have been November 2023. Now I've got my Hocking Hills photos. I abbreviate that HH. I know what HH is, but I can see what time of year. So if I'm looking for winter photos, I'm probably going to be here in the January, February type time frame. And then I've got photos up by Lake Erie, up in Northern Ohio. I've got some of the Metro parks that are close by to me. So now I can sort of jump in and find what I'm looking for by just knowing location. So where this is super, super handy is I recently had a print client come to me and say, do you have any pictures of Metro parks in the area? So because of my new system, I was easily able to go, sure, let me go and I'll curate a gallery for you so you can choose something. So I was able to come in here, go to my Ohio folder, because I have them named, I got Quarry Trails, I've got Scioto Grove. I'm able to go through there, choose ones that I think are good photos, export them, and then you know share them with a the client so they can potentially make a purchase. Before, if I had those done by year, month, day, it would have taken me probably hours to find my Metro Park photos. Because, you know, the Metro Park's close. I don't, it doesn't stick in my memory as much as what day, what time of year did I head over to that Metro Park for an afternoon to take some pictures. 
So it would have been very painful and inefficient process to find that. This new system was such a saving grace because when they asked for it, I was like, sure, because I knew exactly where I had to go in Lightroom and I knew I would see them all very quickly and able to gather them up and export them. So in the as my catalog grows and my locations I visit grows, it just makes it so much easier to track them down. So when I first chose to, when I moved to this, it was a little disconcerting to move away from the date. But one other thing that Suzanne mentioned is the date is in the metadata of the file. So if for some reason you wanted to look up some particular date for everything you shot on that day, and it wasn't clicking location, you just wanted to know what you photographed on that day. If you bounce over into the Lightroom library tab at the top and do command or control F, you can search the metadata and you have the date access right here. So over here on the left, as you can see, I get the same folder structure based off the metadata. So if I want to go see what I was doing 2023 and February and 24th, so February 24th, here I am navigating by date and here I am to some Hocking Hills photos. So even though I've reorganized my catalog to be location based, I can still use the date if for some reason I want to drive in. I can just use the metadata search, which sort of gives me a virtual folder structure to find all the photos I took on that particular day. So really handy and sort of the safety net to move away. But really, I haven't even had to use this. In fact, I had to just go sort of double check and look this up for this video to, to confirm how it worked because I've never had to go back to using the date because the location has been super cool. Okay, so that's the folder layout, that's how it looks. But now you may be wondering, how do I get my images into those folders and how do you do it? So the way I've been doing it, I'm not 100% sure this is the most optimal, but what I've been doing is I do my normal import process in a Lightroom and I let it go into the date that it comes into. I, there's probably a better way to do that, but that's how I'm currently doing it. So I import my photos in a Lightroom, but then I start to, my organization, my next step is to organize it into my folder. So let's use that those images I missed moving uh, from April that we looked at just a couple of minutes ago. And let me show you how I would put that in the right place. First, those images are back here in 2023, underneath 414. So that's April 14th, 2023. I have these six images from Hocking Hills and they should be in my location-based group. So. We're gonna scroll down to my location-based group. I'm gonna collapse some of these, go to Ohio. I'm gonna look at Hocking Hills, and I already have an April 2023 folder. I probably went down to Hocking Hills multiple times in that month. Springtime is a great time to go there, so I do tend to make multiple trips in a month. And I'm comfortable having a lump of photos into one month, even though they might have been done on different days. I'm trying to avoid getting into that daily structure just so that I know if I want a springtime image, April springtime, and I can see several at once. So I am just going to move those April 14th photos into this folder. So we're gonna come up here. We're gonna to go to 414. I'm gonna select them all. So I've got them all selected. I'm gonna scroll down to my Hocking Hills folder that says 0423, which is April, 2023. I'm moving photos from April 14th, 2023, and I am just going to take these photos and I'm just going to drag them into HH underscore 04-23. It's going to ask me, do I want to move the files in the disk? What it's telling me is it's going to actually physically move the files, the actual raw images from their dated folder on my hard drive into this new subfolder that I have called landscape photography images. So it's actually gonna move it and that's what I want because now I will know I need my Lightroom catalog and I need that landscape photography folder that sits on my computer in order to have all my edits and have all my photos. So we're gonna go ahead and click move and it moved it. We're gonna go pop down here into HH023. It was a Cedar Falls image, which should be, and here they are right down here Let's open one of these up. This is the one that was taken up here. You can see I have the info turned on 4-14-2023. So that's how you would organize it. So like I said, I'm not sure my, you could directly import these into that folder that you want. And if you're doing a ton of photos, that's probably where I'm eventually going to move to. But I'm sort of a creature of habit. So my process is, okay, import in Lightroom, let it bring it in the way I want. And then I do the extra step of moving it. I could import these directly into my landscape photography images folder. Let's take a look at that down here again. Got this landscape images folder. So for example, I'm getting set to go to Death Valley again in a few weeks and I could come and when I'm done with that trip, if I wanted to skip the step of import them in like normal and then move them, I could come in here, go to my landscape photography images, create a folder, call it Death Valley 
underscore 2024. I'm unlikely to get there twice in a year, so I'm comfortable with just the year on that particular case. Create that folder. So then I've got my folder created. I can highlight it. I can click import. And then I can come down here for the import dialog. It's going to grab, I don't have a source right now, but if I've had a memory card or if I browse to, to my source, I would come down here to destination, uncheck subfolder. I would go choose what folder I want. All of these folders are underneath my pictures folder on my Mac. And I have my year images put in here. So there's my 2022, 2023. They've got the year date, the old format. These more portrait and headshots I haven't moved yet. But then I can come down here to my landscape images folder. And these are where they physically sit on my disk. Come down to California. There's my new folder I created, Death Valley 2024. And if I had images in here, I could click import and it would pull those straight in there. Essentially what that would let me do is skip that step of let it, Lightroom just bring it in the way it wants and then move them, I could import them directly in that folder. So hopefully you found that helpful. Like I said, if you've been struggling with your Lightroom organization, this has been a tip that has really helped me be more efficient and find images much faster. Uh, Suzanne does an excellent job of explaining this setup in her blog post, which I will link to down below. So I encourage you to go check it out. I'm sure I've probably glossed over a couple of little facts or things like that, but I tried to provide sort of an overview of what this location-based approach looks like, as well as how to move files in there. It takes a little bit of playing, see what works for you, what level of hierarchy works for you. But her article's really detailed and a, a great read. So I will put that in the description. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. But really, location-based organizational Lightroom has been a huge efficiency move for me. And it made me not dread when someone asked for, do you have pictures of this area? Knowing I was going to lose hours of time. Now I can find them in like five minutes, curate a gallery, share it with them to choose their favorites, and go from there. So super great, super efficient, really recommend it. So if you find yourself questioning your Lightroom organization and is it really working for you or entire the defaults, I really recommend taking a closer look at this location-based organization. I think it'll really help your organization as a landscape photographer to find those images from different areas, whether it be lots of trips to places in your local area or bigger trips, just the efficiency of finding things is really a huge improvement. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.